spend their money. We work for property owners as well. So one of the beauties of the firm that we work with is over these years, we understand the property owner. Somebody who owns a downtown vacant hotel, what he or she is thinking about, where they're coming from. We understand the government official. They're going to make a grant that's going to program up what their policy has to be. We understand the investors. If they're going to borrow 10, 20, 30, 40 million dollars in bond money, what are they looking for? To understand the players that are involved. One of the harder players to understand is the public sector. Because what are your perspectives? Are you just trying to, you know, are you trying to achieve a, a more viable downtown, or a more attractive downtown, or solve the issues for the poor? Or, so you often have a mixed bag of objectives. So we spend our time trying to figure out each situation, as Mr. Hall pointed out. On this handout you see, we've worked a great deal in Louisiana. I've been here for 20 years. We have an office and an apartment in New Orleans that I use, especially during the French Quarter Festival, <laughs> other major events for economies, the economist. Uh, but I think the important part is that we've done these kind of projects throughout the country. We have watched cities evolve trying to pursue that stadium, or that convention center, or that, that miracle uh, silver bullet to solve all their problems. We've also done a lot of waterfront development. That is always an emerging program, emerging asset. As we bring to the table here, I believe. We know the trends in the market. We know the trends in development. <coughs> the strengths of our work, I think, as Mr. Hall pointed out, is as we've outlined it on, on the handout here, ERA will provide an objective analysis of the market. What is the market for property in downtown Alexandria? What is the potential? What could really happen here? What is a realistic understanding of market opportunities? We have found over the time that if you have a diverse number of players involved, if they all understand the market, so those of you who are too optimistic, we bring you down to earth a little bit. That it's not quite that easy. It's going to be a bit of an uphill battle. We have to provide some parking. We have to provide some incentives. Those of you who are a bit pessimistic, oh, that won't work, you understand it. So the market kind of brings people together a little bit. Understand the market, market opportunities. <coughs> That's the first part of our assignment here, is to define the market for the riverfront in downtown Alexandria for opportunities. The second part of that is getting commitment. And we have found if we can show you, if we can show the state, if we can show the parish, if we can show the investors or the, the major downtown users, the hospitals, the bank, if we can show them the value of a program, we can get commitment. So a large part of our work in simple terms is to understand the market, what is feasible, what can happen in the next few years, how is Alexandria changing, how can we capture part of that change, to get consensus on what our objectives are, where we want to focus our attention, and then get some commitment to make it happen, to produce visible results. Now, what we proposed for you in our detailed proposal is a team. The team is us and you. We ask Alexandria to tell us what kind of reports they have. We have received some very impressive documents over the last 10 years that were done here. Different studies that were done, different programs that were done. You have an excellent database. Now we've not really tested all of it out, but it, it appears excellent. Some research has been done, some homework has been done. Uh, you've, ident you've identified for us four or five entities that do funding programs. So, you know, so the, some pieces, the, the pieces seem to be in place. So we have this team approach. And uh, what we're doing right now, David is focusing on gathering data and information and studies that were done before, reports. We're going to do some interviews to find out what your perceptions are. What are your priorities for downtown and the waterfront? You've seen the list, you know, Marina. You've seen the list for new retail. We've seen the list for potential housing. The long list of things you want to see happening in downtown. We want to talk to each of you, interview some other what we call decision makers who are involved here, with the city, with the parish, with private companies. Just get a feeling, what, what, what are they shooting for? What are the priorities here? We have the reports, and we do some interviews, and we'll come back to you, come back to you in about three or four weeks and say, we've analyzed all your documents, all your reports, all your data. We've interviewed some of the people who make decisions here, you people for sure, others like you. And here, this, one, this one appears to be your priorities. 
That's what we call our orientation process. So you bring to the table the data, you bring your priorities, we bring our national experience and our objectivity. It's kind of a, 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 a team process here early on. On the document we handed out, phase one is orientation, initial summary. Okay, we'll look at the real estate market here, look at what's been going on, how it's changing, uh, how you are involved with other evolution in the, in the, in the market area. We were talking this morning about your convention center. We've been working from Corpus Christi to the Panhandle of Florida. There are some major casinos who are all building convention space, convention activity. They are subsidizing that space. You can get a free convention center for a week if you bring 400 people there. You know, give you breakfast, what have you. So many areas in this Gulf Coast are, are having trouble with the convention business. <coughs> the tourism business. Tourism business is changing dramatically. It's pre-Katrina. Look at retirement opportunities that are out there. 80 million boomers turning 60 years of age, considering second home locations, could do retirement. We'll go through that whole process. We'll come back to you in a workshop in, a, in about, with Mr. Hall's concurrence, uh, three weeks to four weeks. And based on what we, what we heard from our interviews here, what you told us your priorities were, what we see as the market, we'll talk about how this might mesh. What are the legitimate opportunities here? What might work on that waterfront? Once we agree, then we'll do our detailed market study. So we have a workshop with you in three or four weeks. We make sure we've heard it all from you. We heard your priorities. We heard your interest. We've reviewed all the data that's available. We've implied our experience throughout the area, what we've done in other cities in the area, what they've learned. Then we'll do our market, our market assessment. We call it a SWOT analysis. What are your strengths? Weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Can we do a marina downtown? Can we revitalize an older hotel downtown? Can we attract new investors downtown? What are our opportunities for, for your priorities? Then we'll do some more detailed analysis for market refinement, try to find some partnerships. A partnership for development, a partnership for different activities in the downtown area. A, where are some opportunities for funding? Follow the money. Where are some partners that can make this thing work? We'll go through that in some detail with you again. And then as Mr. Hall mentioned, what are the implications? If we were to revitalize this part of the river, or we add this activity over here, if we were to get this, new, this hotel revitalized, we were to add some downtown housing, if we were to make the, uh, the arena work, what are the impacts? What are the benefits? Who benefits from this? I mentioned when the first time I was here, we learned, I learned this a long time ago, whoever benefits pays, whoever pays benefits. If you don't benefit, you shouldn't be paying. If you don't benefit from a project, you should be perhaps arms back. If you benefit, you should be involved somehow, either as a private businessman, as a partner, or as a taxing body, as a taxing entity, or as a taxpayer. So we'll walk through that with you and try to cover that in some detail. The downtown, the riverfront. In reading the reports that you did provide us, it's fairly clear that most of the people who are involved in downtown Alexandria realize the importance of the river, the future of this downtown, the future of this city. Uh, if you go around the Midwest, if you go around the, the Gulf Coast, if you go around wherever we are working, the downtown is always viewed as the future of the city. It's the urban place. It's where the suburbanites come into. It's where businesses locate. <coughs> it's the center. So we will do, and we'll look at the funding process with you. Our last phase of our work that we outlined to you is something that ERA prides itself in. It's implementation. And we've gone through this process. We've involved all these people. We've assessed all your previous reports. We looked at all the options available. We identify a process for you to follow. And phase one of that process is what is some visible results we can produce to get the momentum going, to get some support. So that's our process. I think uh, it, is, it is not complicated. We've done it before. We cannot apply our work in downtown Baton Rouge. We cannot apply our work in downtown Lafayette because you're different. Your objectives are different. Your markets are different. But we can bring our experience along with us how we found the funding, how we got the partnerships going, how we identified some outside resources, et cetera. 
I'll let David talk about our next our phase we're going through right now. We'll be available for any questions. Hi everyone, thanks for allowing us to come give you this uh, summary and I think Dick did a pretty comprehensive uh, uh, rundown of what we're doing but um, this first phase we're going to be here, I'm going to be here until Wednesday afternoon. Uh, we're going to be conducting interviews trying to get a good feel for your city and and you know what makes Alexandria Alexandria as opposed to anywhere else in the world and uh, and that's going to include uh, you know, trying to interview people that are involved in the real estate market here, that are involved in the public policy making and, and the decision making, and, uh, and tr trying to get as much data as we can. Now, as Dick said, we've already got a number of reports um, that we're looking at, but if, if any of you have additional data, additional information, reports, studies that maybe we haven't seen, that's uh, something that we'd definitely like to see. Um, every angle, every every piece of information that we can possibly, uh, you know, look at to get a good feel for what has been done here before, and where we can take that in the future. Um, so we start with the, an analysis of the real estate market, the trends, um, supply and demand. Um, we look at the market. We look at the competition around. You know, maybe. This works here, this doesn't work here, but if you do this first, then this comes along, and if you do this here, then it can act as a catalyst for uh, another project that might come down the road. And, and that's really our job, is, is to give you a good sense of, of where you can take the market and, and what you can do here. Um, as Dick said, in about three or four weeks, we'll be having a workshop. We will uh, try and provide everyone on the board with an initial list of what our our findings and conclusions of the market are so that you can have that information before we come back and, and, and conduct our workshop. And uh, other than that, I think that's that's pretty much the first phase. And uh, again, we appreciate you having us here and, and giving us the opportunity to tell you about what we're doing. Sure. When we come back to the workshop, we'll come back a few days early and finish our interviews. <coughs> we were reluctant to talk to your city officials and even to some of you until we had a chance to read these documents, read these reports. So we approach you for an interview and some of your time, and you say, well, how about that report? We haven't had a chance, we haven't seen it yet, we haven't read it yet, so we're going to do our homework first. Uh, that's what our process is right now. Uh, we'll work with you on a schedule. Uh, if you have any questions right now. Yes. Let me just say, um, and to your point on uh, your timing as to when you're going to talk to some of some right. of us and the city right. officials, I, did, I do want to add that part of that uh, on that list now was to talk to the municipal government as well as the Congress, right. our right. legislative delegates right. as well, uh, the Senate and, and the representative as well to get yeah, feedback. We, I didn't explain that very well. It, we're first gathering the data and the reports and information, then we read that. And we come back and interview you. So I, th this week, our the work we're doing right now is just gathering people who have data, have demographic data, population data, okay. new economic development growth in the area. We're getting that background material. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty good in terms of volume of what we have available. Good. Any any questions? I just have two. Okay. Number one, where are you based? I'm in Chicago. We are. Uh, I'm in the Chicago office. As I mentioned, we have a, a office apartment in New Orleans. We're working a great deal in New Orleans right now. With, uh, our firm is also a lot of entertainment and recreation. We are working with jazz, the jazz group in New Orleans. We, you see in our report that we did the feasibility for the aquarium. We worked on the convention center. We do a lot of entertainment work. And that's very popular along the Gulf Coast right now as they try to recoup their tourism markets. So we spend a lot of time down here. But our, I'm technically in Chicago. Not technically, I'm physically in Chicago. <laughs> I noticed in your list here that your experiences listed are limited to Louisiana. Right. Those are the front page here. Thank you. For sure. For sure. Yes, I, we listed those for today's, for today's meeting. I've been working here for 20 years in the...
Senators, representatives. Yes. They're the ones you have to really talk to, so we can get some money. I understand Louisiana politics is more than one life. I'm pretty. I've only had 20 years to get my son figure it out. You figured out what? If you figure out Louisiana, let me know. <laughs> Any other questions, comments? Yeah. Go ahead, John. You indicated you've been getting uh, copies of various studies and reports that have been going on. I don't know if you've contacted the Port of Alexandria, but there were several studies that were at, sitting on the table at last week's meeting. I'd encourage you to go get them. Yeah, absolutely. We will. Done by the Waterway Commission. We'll make the list on Thursday of this week, and then we'll send it to Mr. Hall, and you can pass it on of what reports we have seen and assembled. It isn't that you would have a report, but you might know somebody that's done one. Once in a while, the private sector, the shopping malls, the survey of who their, who their customers are, and that isn't out there floating around on somebody's table. If we call them, they'll make it available to us, or it's that kind of thing we're looking for as well. It, Trying to figure out where does Alexandria rate as the urban place for this regional area? What, what role do we play here? What role is established here? What is missing here? What, why are they going to Baton Rouge or Lafayette instead of here? That kind of thing. And that would be done, the mall would have that kind of survey, or some hotel would have that kind of survey, who their customers are. So that takes a little bit of input from you people locally. Well, call so-and-so, he may have that, or call she may have a document like that. We want, to, we want to paint a picture of where you stand today, what the trends have been, then identify where, where are the opportunities. Once in a while, you got to do more than one thing. If we only had a hotel, we could have a convention center. If we only had a convention center, we could have a hotel. Chicken or the egg. Our firm has made a living saying it's the chicken and the egg. You got to have them both. If we had a marina downtown and a lively waterfront, we could have downtown housing. We have downtown housing, we have a lively downtown. Well, you, you gotta combine those two. You gotta have that kind of demographics, that population down there. So that's what part of our work is. And that's what we'll spell out to you as we go forward. Okay, any, any other comments or questions? Um, okay. Thank you very much. Did, did you want to cover anything on incentives? Well, we, it came up many times in our initial data gathering that uh, trying to figure out how you incentivize, how you attract, uh, get cooperation from property owners, building owners, how you get businesses involved. And the whole TIF <coughs> idea came up. I've been working with TIFs for all of my career. They're different, they evolve. We worked with bids, business improvement districts, tax and finance districts, special assessment districts, there's a whole range of programs, but usually they follow the opportunities. When you identify opportunities for the downtown area, and who's gonna benefit from that opportunity, who will max, then you figure out how to fund it. So we'll work with you on that. I think the Louisiana has a package of things right now that's fairly aggressive following Katrina and other changes in legislature and a new governor. So we'll try, you also have around four or five entities here uh, regional and multi-parish and uh, the river corridor who have staff who are looking for funding opportunities, et cetera. So we'll try to coordinate with them as well on, uh, on your funding options. But I think uh, from our initial contacts down here in Alexandria, the following the money might be a very important part of the strategy. If there are funds available here or this could be funded there, you know, ideally we would do X if there's money for X and Y, well, we can do X and Y. So that whole idea, that's what we're doing in New Orleans right now, that's what we're doing elsewhere right now, trying to figure out where are some funding opportunities. So we'll work with you on that as well. Okay. And, and as it relates to the timing, uh, 
you indicated maybe three to four weeks, uh, you'll yeah, come back and do the workshop. There is almost, from our perspective, since you have a fairly good database, at least it appears a good database, we don't have to spend all those hours doing that analysis and demographics, all that. it's all available. There is no reason not to proceed at a fairly rapid pace at this point in time. There's no reason this should move forward, move okay. forward. The funding is out there, our, our d developers are out there looking around, there are opportunities out there. Now, it takes a while to build consensus here and get the city council on board and the parish official. We understand that. But from our perspective, we would urge you to move as quickly as you possibly can uh, to get a strategy that can lead to visible results and get some momentum going, more momentum going. Okay. Any, any comments, thoughts? Well, I was just thinking if you want to find out what's going on in the city of Alexander and how the people feel, give a big free food deal down here and you'll have everybody come eat and tell you something. <laughs> Okay. okay. <laughs> well, I'll check with Mr. Hall on our budget that uh, we have. On. <laughs> Not talking about us paying for it. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you, uh, David and Dick, uh, for uh, what you're doing. And uh, just to give for further clarity, they're going to continue to move forward. Uh, they worked with, uh, with John on the, uh, on, the final, on the final document there, but they just felt a need to go ahead and get started with the data gathering. And uh, they... They're doing an excellent job, and hopefully the timing and everything will work out uh, so that we can uh, perhaps have more quantifiable as well as qualifiable data to assist in, uh, in some of the activity that's going on in the area. There are a lot of things taking place. We know that there is a, uh, as I shared with Dick, uh, a proposal, a TIF proposal that's been submitted uh, by one of the rep uh, representatives. And uh, just at this point, uh, we don't have anything to contribute uh, to that as far as quantifying that project, but we are certain that uh, as we move forward, we're going to have some very usable data uh, that would help us move forward and certainly help develop the, uh, the found portions of the uh, amendment that's being done right now. So uh, with that, any, any comments from anybody as it relates to uh, what any question that Dick had presented today? Uh, from his scope of his project that uh, he's going to be presenting. I don't mind taking the privilege to do that. And I want to thank everybody that's, that's attended so far. So if you have some questions or thoughts about it later on in the program, certainly feel free to let me know and we'll, uh, we'll acknowledge it. As we move forward, uh, as far as Budget and Finance Committee <coughs> update, um, there's been no changes since the last meeting. And except we got some bills to pay, mm -hmm. a couple of bills to pay. Um, I think uh, we have to pay John about 800 bucks. And um, the town talk we owed for three meetings for I think eight, uh, a whopping sum of $18. So uh, we- Mr. President, I move that we pay those two. Okay. All in favor, let me know by saying aye. Uh, aye. Thank you, we move on. Anything from the commercial committee? Or the residential committee, and we've given the uh, the project update. The other thing I'd like to share with you uh, <coughs> at the last meeting, we did mention, or maybe it wasn't the last meeting, we did get a public records request from uh, Representative Roy, and uh, we did work with uh, Mr. Doggett to be sure that we got everything that was requested, and we delivered that. Uh, information about the projects that they had asked about, good, reasonable questions, uh, things of that nature. So all that was delivered uh, to his office, and uh, that's been satisfactorily done. I uh, also would like to share with you uh, funding news, federal funding news. We talked about 200 and I think 47,000 that was going to come through EDI grants. Uh, that we did uh, receive the okay that those funds will be available for us. We also got the news that uh, we've got an additional 588000 that's going to be coming to us, uh, without a doubt, through EDI grants. So those dollars are limited to what you can actually do with them, but uh, <coughs> it is very helpful. And uh, a lot of the long, hard work that you as board members have done over the past couple of years is beginning to pay off. And uh, our congressional delegation is very supportive of what we're doing. And 
assisting us in every possible way. So as soon as we get uh, final documentation on everything, we'll certainly forward that information to you all as board members. And certainly we need to give a special thanks to our delegation uh, with Congressman Alexander, as well as Senator Landrew. And we've got to say Senator Vitter has been very, very helpful. And matter of fact, all of that delegation uh, from Stanley, as well as uh, Malone Song and McCrary have uh, been very supportive in, uh, in assisting us in moving forward with this project. So I just want to share that with you. And um, any comments from the, from the board members? Any questions? Also, anything? Jeff, I have maybe just a quick uh, question as to <coughs> while Dick and David are both here. Uh, in looking over some of the projects that you've done in Louisiana, I happened to be in Natchitoches last weekend, and it's just an incredible project that they have undertaken. What portion of that did you folks do? And did you carry it from the beginning to the end, or? Uh, no, I, I was not involved. I think the Washington office was involved in that, and we were involved some time ago. It was initial groundwork, I believe, assessment of the market, identifying opportunities, similar to what we're doing here. But I think our involvement there was about, it was a while back. I see. I'm sorry, I don't know. I can find it out for you, though. Well, I was just curious because it, it was a. Uh, if it's quite really working, I'm going to find out. I'm going to tell you about it. Quite a transformation <laughs> yeah. uh, in the last yeah. Uh, yeah. maybe two years, I'd say. Yeah. <clears throat> and I don't know if you wanted to make any comments about your direct involvement. Uh, your experiencers are here, but I don't know if they're current or recent or if they're some years back on the ones that you have right. identified on, on some the of those are, Some of those are mine. I worked in downtown Baton Rouge, downtown Lafayette, but it was over the last, oh, we worked for private developers, we worked for the city, did the downtown plan for both cities, and then did some follow-up with private investors and developers. We're currently working mainly in the, in the, on the Gulf Coast area. Sulphur, I did that about a year ago, event center in Sulphur, Louisiana. So they, they vary over time. We have, we did not list, we don't list our private clients because we don't want you calling on private clients about some project. We've done a lot, of, about half our work is private as well, for private developers, property owners, major landowners. Uh, we, I, we, we can expand this a little bit. We send you a list of what we have done, of the reports we have available to us. We'll expand our resume a little bit more for your understanding of who we are and what we've been doing. So we'll, we, you'll get both of them sent to you on Thursday of this week. What reports we have seen from you guys, what documents we have seen, and we'll expand our uh, our resume of work in Louisiana. And we'll certainly quantify that condition, see what if we can take credit or not. <laughs> Great. <coughs> Any comments? Any questions or comments from the uh, from the audience? Glad to have Mr. Curtis here to visit with us. Yes, ma'am. I do have a question. Will the uh, meeting in three or four weeks? Be a public hearing meeting, or will it just be something similar to this forum, or will it be something where the, the stakeholders and everyone's invited to attend? Yeah, I think it's going to be uh, just an update meeting part of the process okay. because that product, but we'll share that information, but it's probably going to be in a format that's not uh, exercisable. Uh, I think it's just going to be part of the phases that we'll go through to get that final pro uh, product. But let's see, if it's something that we need to do publicly, uh, we certainly will do it. But I think uh, in initially, uh, he is just going to be gathering a summary of what uh, he believes to be some important things that we might want to uh, pursue, pursue after he finished gleaning over some of the <coughs> reports of the past. That's a good point, but if uh, it depends on the format that is in. Uh, we have no problem reporting it, but certainly when we meet, we will discuss it and make it available for the public. Okay. Good question. With that, hearing no other questions or comments, I'll entertain a motion. Move for adjournment. Second. All right. Thank you. Thank you.